This is question 5, paper 1, 2011, higher maths paper. Now, before we start this, I'd like to go over how we multiply out, for instance, something like a plus 2 times a plus 3, just as a reminder. So, the usual way to do this is to take the first term in each bracket, usually call these the firsts, Put an F there, and multiply these two expressions together. A times A, that gives us an A squared. So there's the firsts. Uh, then proceed with the outside two terms. This and this are on the outsides. So A times 3, that gives us 3A, and that's the outsides. We then proceed to do the inside two terms, that's this 2 and this a, giving us 2a, and that's the insides, just put an i there and an o there, outsides, insides. And we then finally do the lasts, so that's the last term in each bracket, so that's a 2 times a 3 to give us a 6. So there's a plus 6 and that comes from the last two terms. There's the last. So this looks quite complicated but um, when it all comes down to it we've got the first two terms multiply gives us a squared, the outside two terms give us 3a, the inside two terms give us 2a and the last two terms give us the 6. And usually remember this by the word FOIL, which is a help in remembering these things. Now, 3a plus 2a can be simplified. We get a 5a plus the 6. So the final result, you'll notice, has the firsts giving us the a squared, the last giving us the 6. This term is complicated. The middle term here has come from the outside two and the inside two. It's a combination of the outsides and the insides. So this is the complicated part. Uh, these are fairly straightforward. This is a combination of the outsides and insides. So let's remember that when we're looking at this example here. So x squared minus 8x plus 7 has to be written as some expression x minus something x minus something where both of these brackets are identical. So let's try and tackle that. Um, remember down here the first, the a squared, this a times a came from the two first expressions. So the first expression in this bracket times the first expression in this bracket give us that x squared. There's no problem there. We've dealt with that. This middle expression, remember, came from the outsides and the insides. The two outside expressions and the two inside expressions combined together. That gave us this. So this expression here, we're working backwards here, if we were multiplying this out, this expression here would come from the outside 2 and the inside 2. But remember, because this is an expression squared, this number here and this number here are identical. They're the same. These two brackets are identical. So the outside 2 multiplied and the inside 2 multiplied will give us the same result. So many x, the same number of x to give us minus 8x. Now if you think about it, that's going to be a minus 4x and a minus 4x. Half of the minus 8x come from the, the inside 2, half of them come from the outside 2. So we've basically done this trick. We've got the x minus p all squared here. And if we're checking, let's do the firsts. That gives us the x squared. We've already taken care of that. The outside 2 minus 4x 
and the inside two, minus 4x, give us that minus 8x. So we've taken care of this. Now the only thing that's wrong with this is if we now work out the last, so that's the 6 here, the 2 times 3, the 6. In this case it's minus 4 times minus 4, which is a 16. That's not 7. So if we were to multiply these two brackets out, we'd produce a 16. We don't want that, so let's just take it away. So there is no last term now. That 16 has disappeared because we've taken 16 away from it. And let's just stick the 7 in. So let's see what we've got. We've got an x minus 4 all squared minus 16 plus 7 is minus 9. And if we compare that with this, x minus p all squared plus q. The question says, what is the value of q? q is minus 9. q is equal to minus 9. Let's check what the answers to this question are. There it is. A, value of q is minus 9. So in this case, it's choice A that is the correct answer.